Very good. Very good. Okay, let's see what we have over here. I love this color. This color is extremely fascinating. It's a beautiful, intense amber color that immediately brings me to Cinque Terre. Now, uh, this wine, if it's properly made, is going to speak about the land. Now, if I didn't know that I was putting a Chacatra, looking at something like that, I would think something is wrong here. Why? Well, this wine is made in a very unique way. It is a unique wine, it's made in a unique way. It's a blend, uh, it's a, what we call vinaggio, uvaggio. So it's not, a blend of, uh, it's not a blend of wine, it's a blend of grape. In those terraces, in those vineyards, there are uh, three or four different varietals grown together. And uh, Bosco, which is the main one, is an indigenous varietal that grows there in Cinque Terre, Bosco, Vermentino, um, there is another one called Albarola, uh, those very particular names. Also the name of the grape connected to the people and to the dialect uh, that is from there. Sometimes you have the same varietal, mainly every region in Italy has its own varietal. Some varietal, they, they, they move from region to region, but guess what, they took different names. So you, you may have the same varietal with different names. So those grapes, they're coming from the slope of Cinque Terre. They've been raised, it varies, there is not a recipe to make wine. Usually it's between, uh, between two to four months, it depends on the vintage, it depends on the weather outside, how cold or how mild the winter is. Sometimes they raise them faster, sometimes they don't raise them faster. It's mainly Bosco, because the Bosco varietal has a very thick skin. It's thicker than the Albarone, so it's less delicate. Uh, uh, raisining is a shock also for the grape, so the skin gets weak. So if it's a thin skin, tend to break and rotten. But the Bosco has a thicker skin, so you raisin as well preserving the juice that is still inside. And the color immediately tells us there is something particular in this wine. It's definitely not a pale, uh, uh, what we call like a golden yellow with greenish highlights. We go more into amber. It's definitely amber color. So by definition, the color of the Chacetra and the Vinsanto Toscano, just to make another analogy, it's amber color very very intense of course the wine is unfiltered so it is not 100% clear you don't really see through the wine which is one of the characteristics of the wine nothing bad so Nicola why how do we understand if it is a Chacetra made with raisin grape aged longer to develop those amazing flavor and is sweet and good or if it is a Pinot Grigio turn bad well your nose your nose, it tells you which one it is. I look at the color and I think, is either a young wine turned bad or a great passito style wine developed in an amazing way. So if I put my nose inside and I smell vinegar or rotten eggs, I think something is wrong. But when I approach this wine, the first thing that I got, I got Chocolate, for example. So coming out of a, of, a, of, a, of a white wine, chocolate is quite weird. And it's not really straight chocolate, it's more of the caramel that I, that I, that I get a lot, which really is really amazing. So this wine is all about the nose. 80% of what you taste is not what you taste, is what you smell. Take your time. So let's taste this wine. Um, I think Haiti did an amazing job this particular uh, Chacetra is made with 80% of Bosco, uh, this indigenous varietal that come from Cinque Terre. Some other winemaker, they use 60%. Uh, some other, you cannot go below 40. So from 40 above, you do whatever you want. So that's why the style changes from producer to producer. I love this color. This color is extremely fascinating. It's a beautiful, intense amber color that immediately brings me to Cinque Terre. Now, uh, this wine, if it's properly made, is going to speak about the land. Look at those legs. 
um, this, the drops that are coming back into the center of the glass, they are quite slow. So th this tells me that the wine is very big in body. There is probably a lot of alcohol inside and a lot of glycerin. Glycerin is a polyalkyl molecular. It's the one that gives you the soft sensation on the palate. So it's going to be a very silky wine, soft and silk. And the residual sugar also is going to make my saliva kind of thick, which also uh, um, uh, enhance the softness of the wine. Can I smell it? It's very difficult to talk about this wine in five minutes. Uh, this is what I enjoy to call a meditation wine. It's a wine that the more breeds, the more the time passes, the more it will reveal the flavors that it has trapped in it. Don't forget, this wine is going to tell me about his land. This wine is going to reveal these hundreds of years of fighting between men and the slope and it's going to bring that very dark dirt you can actually you can actually feel you can hear the, the swearing of the cursing of the farmer fighting and you can smell that the dirt the black dirt and the, the funny thing is that there is this caramel that is really predominant uh, because this raisining process of the grape brings all those figs and and dry plums and uh, and uh, also some roasted nuts, all surrounded by this sweetness. I'm saying something very improper. You don't smell sweet. You taste sweet. But this wine gives you that fig, a dry fig thing that your mouth is really watering. Like I'm I'm waiting for something. And but underneath. I get that, that dirt, that dark dirt that the man has to steal out of the mountain. I can smell this wine for an hour and a half. I can smell more than, than, than my taste. But, you know, I introduce myself to this beautiful lady. I see those beautiful legs. She's really smart. She's telling me so many stories. I can actually... I taste it. On the palate, the wine is an explosion of flavors. It's definitely sweet. It's incredible job the Haiti did balancing the residual sugar with the acidity of the wine that keeps the wine extremely alive. It is sweet, but when it comes at this level, it actually bite a little bit with some acidity, which is gonna keep this wine stable and good for another five, six, seven years with no problem bring in the longevity of this wine and makes my mouth very clean at the end. It's sweet but it's not annoying because the, this, the, this acidity is balancing. But one of the things that actually uh, um, uh, can I say, surprised me was the saltiness. Uh, you can actually taste this ocean breeze that the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean Sea is bringing and, the, and, and, and in layers on the vineyards. So it's very sweet up front, acid on the back, and these minerals, what we call sapidita, la, the sapidity, the saltiness. In America they call it the minerality. There are a lot of minerals in this wine. To me, a wine like this is a meditation wine comes at the end, of course, of my meal, uh, goes into the dessert wine, if we want to categorize the wine, it's definitely a dessert wine. Usually, I never have wine with my dessert. I let the wine to be my dessert. Mamma mia, it's perfect. Now it's really perfect. <laughs>